These are the droids you are looking for. And while I'm at it, make sure you subscribe and join the Patreon. Hi Greedy 3Ders, welcome to today's episode. Today is going to be a bit of a Star Wars one for you. We're making these two droids from Star Wars R2-D2 and the gold Wingy one from uh, the Star Wars patron. Wicked's other half if you like, but they're absolutely wonderful, wonderful models. They go together really well, printed them really, really easy. Absolutely wonderful. Really love everything about them. Hope you enjoy what you see today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you put a little like and a comment in the little box that YouTube allows you to do that. And stay tuned for the making of the droids. The prep stage on your model is really important and here you can see me just sanding down a few of the little nubbins that have been left behind by the supports. It's a really good idea and it's absolutely imperative that you do it at this stage before you glue it together and definitely before you paint it as all that work you're going to do is going to be ruined. Now with C3PO I'm going to glue him together before I paint the majority of him. In most models I do this separately but you'd have to look at each model individually and obviously because C3PO is going to be gold all over. I'm going to glue the arms and the heads together and I'm going to leave the bottom parts separate because I'm going to have to put some silver on one of his legs and some black in his mid section but the top part of him and his back plate is all gone together prior to painting. Now what I'm going to use to give him a first layer is this gloss back paint. Now it says matte on it. I've used this quite a few times and it never comes out matte. It always comes out gloss. Whether that's a uh, mistake on the tin I don't know but it's definitely not a matte finish and I'm going to give him a, a blast all over in that as a primer. So a gloss black primer is what you're looking for to give him that shiny start to his metal effect and this paint is great for that I've used it many times and it always comes out with a lovely glossy shiny coat and there we go that's him drawing in the man cave now for R2-D2's head, for a undercoat, I'm just going to give him plate metal. I'm going to give a few layers of this right across, I'm not putting any black on it, I'm not putting any white or grey, he's just having this silver paint splattered across him as his primer and I'm going to leave the base colour as that. For the main part of the body, he's going to get some matte white primer and that's a great colour for him. And I'm going to give it a light-ish coat to leave just a hint of some of the base grey resin coming through just to make it look like it's a little bit worn in places and aged in places. And all of him is going to get exactly the same treatment, both his legs and his body. Now there's not a huge amount of work to do on the droids because a lot of them are big pieces with single colours, but obviously we're going to have to do some blue on R2. I'm going to seal everything at this stage with some crystal clear from Rust-Oleum because I'm going to be doing some masking and I don't want any of that base layer to be coming off with the masking tape so pop this sealant on and give it a good 24 hours to harden. Now I've used some masking tape. I've got a load of different sizes of masking tape and I've popped it on. Now you could use liquid mask. You could just put masking tape on and use a scalpel to cut it out. But I wanted some clean edges so I've just used different sizes to pop it on. Bit of a long winded process but when I moved to my Amiga Blue air paint it's the colour that I wanted on him. And I wanted some clear crisp edges and the masking tape is going to allow me to do that. Now pop it on there, give it a good layer, dry it with a hair dryer and when it's really dry get that masking tape off and you'll see all that hard work with the masking tape has really paid off some nice crisp edges it's going to need some touching up in places but that's absolutely fine the majority of it is is perfect i'm really happy with that i'm going to do exactly the same with his body same masking tape uh, same color on the airbrush giving him a blast of that blue all over and when that's all done the masking tape is off and i am chuffed with how he's looking that's not the end colour, we're going to do some ageing on him, but look at that for a base start, it's amazing isn't it? Same again of course on the legs, masking tape, same blue, take it off, job done, no different. 
Now, these brushes were gifted to me to try and I have to say I'm, I'm really pleased with them. I've used them a few times now and they seem to give a, a good job and look at the ends of that. I mean, that's really kept its point even though I've used it a few times. If you want to get some of these brushes, have a look in the description. I'll put a link. Right, all I'm doing at this stage is I'm just going over R2. I'm going to put some blues and some whites across him, just tidying up some of those edges and just getting any of the blue bits that I feel I've missed. Uh, putting some red around his, uh, his, his lenses and some black around his lenses too and just putting some silver on just generally doing the brush work on r2 that you've got to do to make him finished and uh, I, I think this is a really important stage so i take your time with this part and get all those bits done look at some reference pictures follow them and get it all on there now this is the important bit too some shade null oil from citadel I'm going to make him aged, I'm going to look battered, he's going to look like some jowers have dragged him around by the short and the curly. So what I want you to do here is just put some of that oil on, use a sponge and take it off again. And it will just sit in the backgrounds, it will just sit there really, really slightly in the foreground too. And it will make it look really aged and battered. This null oil is wonderful stuff. Don't get me wrong, when you first put it on, you, you sort of do a little bit of a swallow that you're ruining all your hard work. But when you get your sponge on it and take it off, it looks absolutely fantastic. And do the same across the whole of R2D2 till you get it all on there. To take a little bit of a Leho gloss varnish and I'm going to paint over the kind of lenses on R2's dome just to make them shiny just to make them look like they've got some glass so that's going to be on the red part on the black main circle and also on some of the little other little uh, looks like lenses built into it now for C3PO I tried a myriad of colors and this is the one I settled on now you may notice that he did start off black but of course I'm spraying gold over gold this was the original color that I uh, I didn't like but this new color from um, the Rust-Oleum range is absolutely fantastic I'll put a link in the description where I got it from from Amazon so you know which one it was but this is the perfect color for C3PO as I say I tried about three or four different colors and I couldn't find the right one until I came across this one and I'm chuffed with that now the green stuff world chrome metal I'm going to use for his one leg I've not used this stuff before but I've got to say it's blooming awesome it's really really metallic and shiny and I am going to be using this one moving forward on things like terminators on Colossus it's a brilliant brilliant color and look at the shine on that lovely now here he is on the paintbrush stage and I'm going to take some more of that null oil and I'm going to give him a little bit of a battered look too I don't want him to be too pristine and too clean you know he's just been dragged across Tatooine so um, take your null oil paint it on and use that sponge to wipe it off be as liberal as you like but don't overdo it try not to let it gather in clumps anywhere use your sponge to mop those off we want it sitting on the background and sitting in the natural lines where, it, where dirt would have gathered and I've done the same thing to the whole of his body including his silver leg and again don't overdo it but make sure you give him that battered look taking some demonic yellow on a nice bright color for his eyes and this is more of a base color that is going to be the final color and get some of that yellow into his eyes I mean if you if you're skilled with some LEDs yeah you can wire them in and get them all lit up but I just want to have this one as a base model so yellow is the base color now uh, for this midsection I'm going to paint that black he could have masked it off and sprayed it but it's just as easy to use a brush and paint it nothing special with the black paint it's just some matte black paint now again for the eyes I'm using some zealot yellow and I'm going to just dob it in there it's one of the army painter speed paints and what this will do it will just give it a look of orangey yellowy red color and just make it look a little bit more interesting on the eye or in his eye in this case now CP3O's midsection is full of wire so what I've done here is I've just taken some silver on a dry brush and I've just highlighted all the wires against the black and I'm just going to take a couple of colours a red a silver and a white and I'm just going to highlight a couple of the wires in there just to make them stand out a bit I'm not going to go over the top I'm just going to do a couple just so they add a little bit of a visual thing for the eye to focus on I'm 
I'm going to make my own base for them and I'm using some XP foam and the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure they both fit on there and work out where C-3PO's legs are going to go and I'm going to use a scalpel cut that bit out just so I know that his feet will fit through there and then I'm going to take a hot wire cutter from the army painter and I'm going to cut around the outer layer of the XP foam just to give it a little bit of a sporadic look if you will I'm then going to take the same cutter and just take that highlighted edge off I don't want any right angles so I'm just going to take the edge off and that's the base done now good tip here is when you finish make sure you take the batteries out and put it away you don't want it to be burning somewhere right all-purpose filler I'm using Tesco's which is a big supermarket where I am but use any filler you can any filler you can get your hold of it's dirt cheap and just splatter it across the base and use your gloved hand and make sure you wear gloves to just Pat it down to give it a little bit of an uneven shape and then take some scenery sand and sprinkle that across. My favourite part, this is I absolutely love putting this sand on. It makes a bit of a mess, so try not to be too uh, messy and make sure you, you vacuum up well afterwards uh, or you're going to get in a world of pain. Once that's on there, I've took some of these little polystyrene stones. All these are army painter things, really, from the army painter battlefields basing kit. And I'm just going to poke them into the, uh, the wet cement kind of filler just so they stick in there and then I'm going to take some of this desert and arid waste terrain primer and spray over that XP board. Now this is a great colour, it doesn't melt the uh, XP board either, some glues will do so, this won't. So spray it all on there until it's got a really good layer all over and then I'm going, once it's dried I'm going to get some desert base and I'm just going to dry brush that across it. Any light yellow will do a yellowy orange colour. Some waste wash, again this is Games Master from Army Painter and I'm just going to pop that on there to give it a bit of a, a new colour all over just to take away the boringness of the yellow. And once that's done and dusted and on there I'm going to dry brush across just a lighter colour and it is done and dusted and finished. Well, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I just want to take a few moments to thank my patrons for all their support. If you want to join the patron scheme, uh, all the details will be in the description. If you want to support the channel in any other way you can, please subscribe to the channel, like, share, leave a comment. That really does help the algorithm. And if you want to buy any paints, if you want to buy anything, have a look in the item description. There is an Amazon affiliate link and a little bit will kick back to the channel and just allow me to carry on doing things like this for you guys so hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and uh, join in me next time on greedy 3d we're gonna have another star wars one next time so <gasps> wait for it mm -hmm.